I just want to provide everyone with a few brief updates on some of the challenges we're dealing with right now. First, we are continuing to closely monitor the emergency cases of the H1N1 flu virus throughout the United States. As I said this morning, this is obviously a very serious situation, and every American should know that their entire government is taking the utmost precautions and preparations. Our public health officials have recommended that schools with confirmed or suspected cases of this flu strongly consider temporarily closing. And if more schools are forced to close, we've recommended that both parents and businesses think about contingency plans if their children do have to stay home. I've requested an immediate $1.5 billion in emergency funding from Congress. to support our ability to monitor and track this virus and to build our supply of antiviral drugs and other equipment. And we will also ensure that those materials get to where they need to be as quickly as possible. And finally, I've asked every American to take the same steps you would take to prevent any other flu. Keep your hands washed. Cover your mouth when you cough. Stay home from work if you're sick and keep your children home from school if they're sick. We'll continue to provide regular updates to the American people as we receive more information. And everyone should rest assured that this government is prepared to do whatever it takes to control about our ongoing efforts to prepare this country for the H1N1 flu. virus this fall. And I want to thank uh, John Brennan, uh, our CDC director, Tom Friedman, uh, Frieden, uh, and Secretaries Sebelius, Napolitano, Duncan, and Locke for all the good work that they've been doing to get us ready today. As I said when we saw the first cases of this virus back in the spring, uh, I don't want anybody to be alarmed, uh, but I do want everybody to be prepared. We know that we usually get a second, larger wave of these flu viruses in the fall, and so response plans have been put in place across all levels of government. Our plans and decisions are based on the best scientific information available, and as the situation changes, we will continue to update the public. And we're also making steady progress on developing a safe and effective H1N1 flu vaccine, and we expect a flu shot program will begin soon. This program will be completely voluntary, but it will be strongly recommended. For all that we do in the federal government, however, every American has a role to play in responding to this virus. We need state and local governments on the front lines to make antiviral medications and vaccines available and be ready to take whatever steps are necessary to support the health care system. We need hospitals and health care providers to continue preparing for an increased patient load and to take steps to protect health care workers. We need families and businesses to ensure that they have plans in place if a family member, a child, or a co-worker contracts the flu and needs to stay home. And most importantly, we need everyone to get informed about individual risk factors, and we need everyone to take the common sense steps that we know can make a difference. Stay home if you're sick. Wash your hands frequently. Cover your sneezes with your sleeve, not your hands, and take all the necessary precautions to, to stay healthy. 
I know it sounds simple, but it's important and it works. Uh, finally, for people who want to learn more about this virus, please go to www.flu.gov or talk to your doctor. I want to commend every member of our team. I think we've done an extraordinary job in preparing for this flu outbreak. Uh, we anticipate that there will be uh, s uh, some issues coming up over the next several months. Uh, the, the way it's moving is still somewhat unpredictable, uh, but what I'm absolutely confident about is that uh, our team that's assembled here has done an extraordinary job in preparing uh, for uh, whatever may happen. So we appreciate all of you for being here, and uh, I want to publicly again thank you for all your extraordinarily hard work. Realistically, is the Cambodian government and the Ministry of Health up to that kind of an operation? Um, at the moment, if it was to happen tomorrow, not yet. But neither is the rest of the world. If H5N1 were to become highly contagious in humans this winter, it could spread to every country in the world in a matter of months. There is no way that governments, health organizations, and pharmaceutical manufacturers would be able to produce sufficient amounts of the strongest antiviral drugs or vaccines to contain it. Right now, and we all admit that, right now, if we had an explosion of an H5N1, we would not be prepared for that. Homeland Security Secretary was asked what her message is to worried Americans. We, we can't just, we're not, can't just say stop everything.